Muzaffa Sharif, Conformity and Autokinetic Effect. In 1935, Muzaffa Sharif conducted experimental research to discover whether people are influenced by others when doing an ambiguous task. That is one which, which doesn't have a clearly defined answer. This was a laboratory experiment with a repeated measures design, meaning each participant was exposed to the experimental conditions on repeated occasions. Sharif used a visual illusion called the autokinetic effect, in which a stationary spot of light, when viewed in a dark room, appears to move. Participants were deceivingly told that the experimenter would move the light, and that the task for them was to estimate how much it had moved by. During phase one, participants made repeated estimates. Participants were then placed into groups of three and asked to make the estimation with others present. Finally, they were retested individually. Results of participants were stable individually, yet varied widely amongst each other as they had developed their own personal norms. When in a group, the estimates converged and became more alike. When retested for a final time, results closer resembled the group estimates than their original guesses. But what does this tell us about group influence and conformity? Well, this shows us that participants were influenced by the estimates made by the group and what is known as a group norm developed. The participants of the study used the information they had gathered from the group's guesses to adjust their own, thus being affected by informational social influence. Okay, so what are some of the key things we need to remember when evaluating this study? Well, firstly, it was a laboratory experiment which means that due to the strict control of variables, it is easier to identify a cause and effect relationship as the likelihood of an unwanted variable being responsible is significantly reduced. The study can also be easily replicated by other researchers. The repeated measures design of the study meant that the participants' variables that could have affected the results were kept constant. There are flaws and limitations to the study design, one being the fact that participants were asked to judge the movement of light, which was not in fact moving at all. This is an unlikely situation to occur in everyday life, therefore it can be argued that it lacked ecological validity. The samples were taken from all males, so therefore these results aren't generalizable to the population. Also, the participants were told that the light would move, but it didn't, so deception may lead to questions of ethical practice.